Google has just surprised the AI world with a model with a million token context window. Welcome back to the AI Breakdown. Today, we had some unexpected and exciting news out of Google. CEO Sundar Pichai tweets, In December, we launched Gemini 1.0 Pro. Today, we're introducing Gemini 1.5 Pro. This next-gen model uses a mixture of experts' MOE approach for more efficient training and higher quality responses. Gemini 1.5 Pro, our mid-sized model, will soon come standard with a 128K token context window. But starting today, developers and customers can sign up for the limited private preview to try out 1.5 Pro with a groundbreaking and experimental 1 million token context window. The 1 million tokens feature unlocks huge possibilities for devs. Upload hundreds of pages of text, entire code repos, and long videos, and let Gemini reason across them. It's still experimental and early, and we'd love your feedback. Now, context windows are something that people have been talking about ever since ChatGPT launched. It refers to the number of tokens that any given model can engage with at a particular time. The larger that window, the more coherent an LLM can reason across a bigger volume of text. To get a sense of how much of a difference it is to be talking about 128k and million token context windows, people were incredibly excited to see ChatGPT move from 8k up to 32k. So obviously we're talking about significantly longer than that. Anthropics Claude has also used longer context windows to try to compete. Although, of course, one of the things that people watch out for is whether performance starts to degrade when you're actually using longer context windows. Still, the initial response has been incredibly excited. Lior at Alpha Signal writes, Just in, Google releases Gemini 1.5, a powerful MOE model. It's a huge breakthrough. The model has the longest context window ever seen, 1 million tokens. It can process one hour of video, 11 hours of audio, 30,000 lines of code, or 700,000 words in a single prompt. When tested on text, code, image, audio, and video evaluations, 1.5 Pro outperforms 1.0 Pro on 87% of the benchmarks used for developing LLMs. Jeff Dean, the chief scientist at Google DeepMind and Google Research, says... One of the key differentiators of this model is its incredibly long context capabilities, supporting millions of tokens of multimodal input. The multimodal capabilities of the model mean you can interact in sophisticated ways with entire books, very long document collections, code bases of hundreds of thousands of lines across hundreds of files, full movies, entire podcast series, and more. Now, given that Google has kind of a history of announcing things before they make them available, Another thing that people were very excited about is that early testers were actually allowed to start using this 1 million token context window at no cost during the testing period. Writing about the technical approach to this model on their announcement post, Google says, Gemini 1.5 is built upon our leading research on transformer and MOE architecture. While a traditional transformer functions as one large neural network, MOE models are divided into smaller expert neural networks. Depending on the type of input given, MOE models learn to selectively activate only the most relevant expert pathways in its neural network. This specialization massively enhances the model's efficiency. Google has been an early adopter and pioneer of the MOE technique for deep learning. Our latest innovations in model architecture allow Gemini 1.5 to learn complex tasks more quickly and maintain quality while being more efficient to train and serve. These efficiencies are helping our teams iterate, train, and deliver more advanced versions of Gemini faster than ever before. Another performance piece that many people noticed was this one. Quote, Gemini 1.5 Pro maintains high levels of performance even as its context window increases. In the needle in a haystack evaluation where a small piece of text containing a particular factor statement is purposely placed within a long block of text, 1.0 Pro found the embedded text 99% of the time, in blocks of data as long as 1 million tokens. Jeff Dean again tweeted about this a little bit, saying, Needle in a haystack tests out of 10 million tokens. First, let's take a quick glance at a needle in a haystack test across many different modalities to exercise Gemini 1.5 Pro's ability to retrieve information from its very long contexts. He points out that the results are almost entirely good, meaning 99.7% recall even out to 10 million tokens. That's in audio, video, and text. Avi Schiffman, who's working on the AI wearable tab, writes, Perfect recall with 10 million tokens? The Messiah has arrived, and its name is Google. Developer Nick Dobos responded, what? That's crazy. Okay, Google, you might have a chance. And indeed, this is the sentiment that I am seeing all over Twitter slash X today. In many ways, this Gemini 1.5 Pro announcement has developers and people who are deep in this technical part of this space more excited than Gemini Advanced even did. There is so much sentiment like, wow, Google is really shipping, which is, of course, a complete switch from the discussion around them last year. The Verge's piece about this is Gemini 1.5 is Google's next-gen AI model, and it's already almost ready. The next version of Google's model is better and faster, sure, but it also has one pretty remarkable new party trick. 
Now, The Verge does a good job of contextualizing what 1 million tokens means in this multimodal model. Apparently, Sundar Pichai told The Verge that means you can fit the entire Lord of the Rings film trilogy into that context window. As you might imagine, this has a lot of people saying, is OpenAI starting to fall behind? Where is GPT-5? Is this going to put increased pressure on them? Well, interestingly, we did get some new leaks about some things going on inside OpenAI that do in some ways relate to Google as well. Last week, we heard that they were working on AI agent startups, but now, according to people with knowledge of the project, OpenAI is also working to develop a web search product that would bring them into direct competition with Google and, of course, other AI search tools like Perplexity. Writes the information, OpenAI has been developing a web search product that would bring the Microsoft-backed startup into more direct competition with Google. Now, details are scant right now. The information source said that the search service would be partly powered by Bing, but it wasn't clear whether it would be a separate product from ChatGPT or in some ways embedded into ChatGPT. Now, this is a story that I could see going in a bunch of different ways. It could be as simple as a slightly different interface and a set of expanded features around what they already have, which is effectively what Perplexity has done. Although, of course, done in such a valuable way that many people have shifted their research behavior entirely to Perplexity. Or it could be a fundamentally different and expanded product. In any case, it feels to me like there is a lot brewing and bubbling behind the scenes at OpenAI, and it'll be interesting to see what actually pans out. Now, staying on the topic of OpenAI for just a minute, they just published a piece called No, Sam Altman Isn't Raising Trillions of Dollars for Chips. And basically what they're saying is that while the Wall Street Journal report from last week implied that he was actively seeking that much capital for some sort of joint venture, instead... That's Altman's calculation of the total cost of everything from real estate to power for data centers that it would take to actually achieve the type of objective that he wanted to see. So it's not just some specific company that he's out trying to raise money for. To me, it's pretty interesting to see Google putting the pedal to the metal so hard and finally starting to reclaim some ground against OpenAI, which had been so lost throughout the course of 2023. Will this mean that we'll see an increased urgency from OpenAI to release more advanced models or new types of products? Or are they comfortable just continuing to go at their own pace? That is certainly what I will be watching and I will share it with you as I get any clarity on it. For now, though, that is going to do it for today's AI Breakdown. Until next time, peace.